Greetings everyone and welcome to a video review of Rome Total War Barbarian Invader. I'm Seth Kippers, the Cynical Trot, and I'll be your guide for this video presentation. Let's answer one simple question. What is Barbarian Invasion? Barbarian Invasion is an expansion pack for the original Rome Total War. It sets the period in late antiquity between 363 to 476. Basically antiquity is slowly dying and a new although not better age is coming. It adds new futures, factions and gameplay elements. The goal of the game remains the same. Select a new faction and lead it to glory. The menu offers historical battles, though only two. The Battle of Chalons and the Battle of Bandon Hill. There is no prologue or tutorial, but there is the grand campaign. There is a decent amount of factions to choose from, 10 to be precise. You can set the difficulty of the campaign, the difficulty of battles, arcade mode which removes stamina and limited ammo for your units, and the option to build units and buildings only when the general is in the city. You cannot set the length of the campaign, it is special to each faction. The gameplay is the same as in the original, but I will explain it nonetheless in short order. The first part rolls around managing your cities, armies, fleets and agents. Cities can be managed in such way to improve income, public order and grant access to mil new military units. Armies can be used to attack other armies, garrison cities and siege cities to conquer them. Once conquered, these options are presented to you. Occupation, enslavement and extermination. Occupation takes the city peacefully with no casualties to the population, but establishing a stable public order will take more time. Enslavement takes a part of the population and sends it across your realm to improve your economy. Extermination means you kill three quarters of the population and establish stable public order. However, it will take more time to develop that city to be prosperous. Fleets are used to transport your armies and dominate the sea. They are auto-resolved and the outcome depends on the type of ships and the skill of the admiral. For agents, you have spies, diplomats and assassins. Spies infiltrate armies and cities and give you information on the number of units and types of buildings. Diplomats are used to establish relations with other factions and negotiate agreements such as trade, alliance or ceasefire. Assassins eliminate other agents and generals as well. The, gener the generals perform the same role as in the original game. They lead armies and govern cities. I didn't fully explain how the trade and retinue system works, so I'll do it here. You get traits and retinues at random depending on the circumstances. If your general manages to be victorious multiple times, he could get the trait of a capable commander, improving his command skill. On the other hand, if a general governs a city that has an inn or a tavern, there is a possibility that he will drink there and become an alcoholic, producing his skill of management. Same applies to retinues. The same situations can happen to agents. Once again, the, re the retinues may be exchanged between generals and the same applies to agents, but only if they are the same type. The second part of the game is tactical battles. You engage an enemy army in the desert with a bridge nearby and the battle map will show that. You have your deployment zone and you set your unit's behavior and formations, their positions and start the battle. Elements such as unit types, weapons, armor, morale, stamina, types of terrain, high terrain, fire arrows, scary units, general's presence, flanking maneuvers, number of men lost in a unit and how the fight is going on affect how the battle will play out. It all depends on these factors and your creative tactical solutions. It's the same as in Rome Total War. With all that said, there are significant differences to make the gameplay different. First off, factions. The amount of playable factions is smaller compared to the original game and they are more homogenized. That means that their army rosters are more similar to each other than in Rome Total War. Let me explain. Each faction has at least a unit of swordsmen, spearmen, cavalry and archers. Except the Huns, they don't have foot archers. And these units are capable in their roles, unlike in the original game in which the Greeks had excellent hoplites, but no swordsmen and poor cavalry. Even the Sassanid Empire, an eastern faction, has relatively capable infantry to do their bidding. I also want to point out that the units in Barbarian Invasion have more armor than the units in Rome Total War, making the battles last a bit longer. Second, Horde factions. It is a new future in Barbarian Invasion. Some factions can hoard when their last city is conquered. That means that they get a large amount of Horde units, for which you don't pay upkeep 
but you can't retrain them either. The only way to eliminate such factions is to kill their faction leaders and heirs. The factions that can hoard are Huns, Goths, Sarmatians, Vandals and Franks. Third, religion. You have Christianity, Paganism and Zoroastrianism. The religion plays a role in the public order of your cities, so you have to build religious buildings to convert the population. The Sassanid Empire has Zoroastrianism and cannot change its religion. The other factions can choose between Christianity and Paganism. Having both in your realm will cause public disorder. Characters can be Pagan or Christian, making it more complex to assign them to the right cities. Or you can just send them to battle to die. Christianity gives more public order, Paganism gives a bit of public order with some bonuses to weapons and armor, while Zoroastrianism gives public order and trade bonuses. Fourth, Loyalty. It is an added attribute to the Roman factions. Loyalty determines how obedient your general is to your factions and the chances of him rebelling against you. If he rebels, he takes the whole army under his command at the time. Disloyal generals should be sent to battle to ensure they die, causing you no problem in the long run. Fifth, Emergent Factions. These factions can emerge under specific circumstances, whether it be public disorder in a faction or historical reason, usually time. For example, if one of your Roman generals rebels, a new faction will be created, the Western or Eastern Roman rebels. The Romano-British will emerge when one of the cities in Britain falls under someone else's controls, and the Slavs arrive in 410 AD. In tactical battles, some units can swim across rivers, providing you an additional option to your strategy. Night battles can also be conducted if your general has the trait Night Fighter. This is a nice touch and an extra tactical option, because if the enemy has an army nearby that could reinforce him, choosing to fight at night will deny the enemy his reinforcements, unless the reinforcing army has a general that has the same trait. Other than that, the game has the same music, sound, graphics and control. So everything I said for a Rome Toll War applies here. The sound is top notch, the music excellent and the graphics ok considering the scale, although comparing it to the games of that time you can see that it could have been improved. The expansion provides a good challenge for those who want to lead the Roman Empire to strengthen it or crush it with the other factions. I give this expansion a 9 out of 10. Its different setting, gameplay, music and special victory conditions for each faction provide enough enjoyment for anyone interested in this period or interested in grand strategy games. This has been Seth Kipris, the Cynical Croat, signing off.